Eternal Father of mercy and compassion, may your name be praised and be glorified on this blessed day that you have given us. We pray sincerely that your spirit and your power may be upon us to lead us, to give us wisdom, to understand in this presentation in Jesus' name. Amen. Greetings, brothers and sisters, colleagues and friends all over the world. I want to welcome you all in a very special way. This is the Herald Report Ministry. I'm Kuzai, your host as always. We are ever thankful and grateful as we go towards the year. The question is, how has your year been? And today, let's talk about life battles and experience. Lies, battles, and faith. And we're talking about the, our experience at Rafedim, looking at the journey of the Exodus. And if you remember a few days ago, we're talking about the story of the Exodus. We covered the subject of the mixed multitude. And just before that, we talked about the temptation as well. And we focus also on the people of Israel, the challenges which they are faced, which they faced. And as we go towards the end of the year, brothers and sisters, I just want to draw you back once more to the book of first corinthians chapter 10 which paul actually emphasized that we need to have an understanding of the experience of the exodus so that we may know what to do how to do it and when to do it and the bible says from the book of first corinthians chapter 10 from verse 1 Moreover, brethren, I will not that you should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. And all and did all eat the same spiritual meat. And uh, what did they drink? And they drank from that rock that followed them. And that rock was Jesus Christ. However, with many of them, remember, God was not well pleased. And today, brothers and sisters, I just want us to focus on how their traveling was. Because they drank from the rock. The rock that followed them was Jesus Christ. And they were covered by the shed during the day and the pillar of fire by night so we are looking at the experience of the people that are being led by the spirit of god that have the presence of god throughout their journeys as they move from egypt all the way to canaan brothers and sisters how has been your 2023 was god leading you did you feel the presence of the Lord? Did you see the presence of the Lord? Was he there for you? Did you realize his presence? The Bible says in the book of Numbers chapter 9, verse 16, So it was always the cloud covered it by day and the appearance of fire by night. So basically the cloud covered by day and the appearance of fire by night and the cloud was taken up from the tabernacle then after that the children of israel journeyed and in the place where the cloud abode there the children of israel pitched their tents and the com at the command of the lord the children of israel journeyed and at the command of the lord they pitched as long as the cloud abode upon the tab tabernacle they rested in their tents you know, the singer says, take time to be holy, speak often with the Lord. Do not run before him, let him lead the way. So what we see with the children of Israel, the cloud will lead the way. They will follow the cloud. They will do everything according to the cloud. When the cloud moves, then they move because the cloud was there for their defense. The cloud was there for their protection, what the cloud was there, for their shield. That's why the singer said, the Lord our rock, in him we hide a shelter in the time of storm. Whatever may be tied, we have a shelter in the time of storm. Mighty rock, cooling shed on the burning sand, and he's the faithful guide on this pilgrim journey, this shelter in the time of storm, as we journey our journeys. Brothers and sisters, how has been your experience? Has God been leading you? Have you followed him? Have you trusted in his leadership? Verse 19, the Bible says, And when the cloud tarried long upon the tabernacle many days, then the children of Israel kept the charge of the Lord and journeyed not. And so it was when the cloud was a few days upon the tabernacle, according to the command of the Lord, they abode in their tents. And according to the command of the Lord, they journeyed. So basically, the movement was determined by the cloud. 
The time of movement was determined the cloud. The length of movement was determined by the cloud. Brothers and sisters, let our eyes be on Christ if we are going to be successful. Let Christ lead the way. And whatever you decide to do when Christ leads the way, it's a blessing. You know, I know this friend of mine. And uh, when uh, you actually talk to uh, call him, he doesn't answer your phone very quickly. And uh, he will be waiting and you try to wonder, why does he answer very quickly? And sometimes uh, one day I spoke to him and then he said, you know what, uh, I have to know whether the Lord wants me to answer or not. Otherwise, sometimes the Lord does not want me to answer. It sounds a bit strange, is it? But brothers and sisters, I think what my friend was trying to say is that, you know what, some of the things, we just need to consult God in everything. And if God says, yes, let's do it. If God has not spoken, it will spoken, we'll wait until God has spoken. Because definitely God responded. Now I'm talking from my experience with God. Brothers and sisters, God responds. God answers God converse if he has done it to the children of Israel he can do it with you just pray that God will give you that experience where you can hear his voice his voice is very audible and it could be heard and you can hear it brothers and sisters he says verse 21 and so it was when the cloud abode from even until morning and that the cloud was taken up in the morning then they journeyed, whether it was by day or by night, that the cloud was taken up, they journeyed. Now look at this, brothers and sisters. Sometimes during the night when they were to travel, uh, you can actually say it's dangerous to travel at night. There are serpents in the desert. They are, they are gorges. It's what? But remember, as they were drive, traveling at night, there was a pillar of fire. And that was the best time to travel. It doesn't matter what it takes. It doesn't matter the surrounding. When God says it's time to move, that's the best thing to do. Don't look at the surroundings. Think about the one who has called you. Sometimes God calls us to do things which are beyond understanding. Are you sure that if I stop working, I can survive? Are you sure that if I leave my job to preach the gospel, I can survive? Brothers and sisters, the one that calls us, he will qualify us and provide all that we need according to his riches in glory. Are you sure that uh, it's not dangerous? The one who called you is able to carry you upon his shoulders. The one who called you, he will carry you like an eagle. Brothers and sisters, the time and duration of movement is determined by the cloud. The direction of movement is determined by the crowd. Then I ask myself a question. When I'm about to move, when I'm about to change my location, when I'm about to do something, has the cloud moved? Has the cloud directed me? Is this the journey which I'm supposed to take? Can the cloud go through the barren land? In the land where there is nothing much. Can the crowd lead me in the land of want? Can the crowd lead me in places unfavorable? Brothers and sisters, God is God. And he knows what's best. And sometimes what we think is not the ideal is the most ideal. Patrick's and Prophets, page 282, said, And they took their journey from Succoth and encamped in Etham, in the edge of the wilderness. And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead them the way, and by night in the pillar of fire to give them light to go by day and night. He took not away the pillar of the cloud by day, nor the pillar of fire by night from before the people, says the psalmist, he spread a cloud for a covering and fire to give light in the night. That's Psalms chapter 105, verse 59. Verse 39, I mean to say. So he was watching 24-7. He was leading 24-7. He did not take away his eyes from them. The shepherd of Israel direct the path of his ship. 
And the psalmist said, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow of fear and death, I fear no evil. Your rod and your staff comfort me. And even in the presence of my enemies, you prepare a table. My cup runneth over. Brothers and sisters, how has been our experience with the Lord? All I can safely say is, God is faithful. The cloud was there by day. The pillar of fire has been there by night. And even now, the shepherd is still directing the sheep of his flock. Now, chapter 17, verse 1, the Bible says, And all the congregation of the children of Israel journeyed from the wilderness of sin after their journeys according to the command of the Lord and pitched in Raphidim. And there was no water for the people to drink. Therefore the people did cheat with Moses and said, Give us water that we may drink. And Moses said unto them, Why cheat ye with me? Wherefore do you tempt the Lord? Did Moses say, let's go to the wilderness? No. Did Moses say, let's go through the wilderness? No. But the cloud was reading. So where were they to direct their cry? They were to direct their cry to the cloud. Brothers and sisters, there are times that we complain to people unnecessary. There's no need to complain to people when they've not started the journey with you. As long as you start the journey with the Lord, remember he said, never will I leave you nor forsake you. So if you are going to complain, direct your complaints to God. Don't direct your complaints to people. You say that people have neglected you. You say that people, they don't care about you. Brothers and sisters, stop relying on people and rely on God. And let me repeat repeat this again. Do not rely on people. Rely on God because God has a sure promise. Never will I leave you nor forsake you. And when there is a problem rather than complaining to people go to God. And when you go to God you see the power, the goodness and the love of God. Verse 4 the Bible says and the people thirsted there for the water. And the people murmured against Moses and said wherefore is this that thou hast brought us up, up out of Egypt to kill us and our children and our cattle with thirst? As if Moses had said, let's go. As if Moses had started the journey. As if Moses was their redeemer. As if Moses was their guide. Brothers and sisters, do not depend on people. Over the years, in the preaching of the gospel, I've learned this lesson. Don't depend on people. Depend on God. Don't trust on people. Trust on God. God is the sure defender. God is the sure provider. God is a sure sustainer. And as God lead the way, God does not change. Now verse 5, the Bible says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Go on before the people and take with thee of the elders of Israel and the, thy road wherewith thou smotest the river, take it in thy hand and go. Behold, I will stand before thee there upon the rock in Horeb, and thou shalt smite the rock, and they shall come water out of it, that the people may drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. Where was it? It was at Raphidim. And there was no water. And God provided water at Raphidim. But that was not the only problem at Raphidim. At Raphidim, there were also wars. At Raphidim, Amalekai attacked Israel. At Raphidim, Amalekai destroyed many Israel. And the Bible says in, Gem in Exodus chapter 17, verse 10, So Joshua did as Moses had said to, to him and fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and who went up to the top of the hill. And it came to pass when Moses held up his hand that Amalek prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. So now as Moses held up his hand, Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, 
Amalek prevailed. What was happening here? This was fight with Amalek. Later on, as Moses was departing, he decided to give an account of how Amalek attacked Israel. And the Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 25, verse 17, Remember what Amalek did unto thee by the way when you came when you were come forth out of Egypt, how he met thee by the way, and smote thee, and most of thee, even all that were feeble behind thee, when thou wast faint and weary, and he feared not God. So Amalek was very cruel. They went to those who were behind, to those who were crippled, to those who are feeble, I want to believe they attacked the elderly. They attacked those who are weak and they wanted to destroy them. But God in his mercy and love, he decided to defend his congregation. And what did he do? He actually led Israel to fight. But you know, I want to emphasize on the way how this battle was fought because this is critical. The Bible says in Exodus chapter 17, 25, but Moses' hands were heavy. And they took a stone and put it under him. And he sat thereon, and Aaron in who stayed up his hands, the one on the one side, and the other on the other side. And his hands were stayed until the going down of the sun. And Moses discomfited discomfited Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. So the war was raging. The battle was being fought. Moses, Aaron, and who were on top of the mountain. Joshua and the armies of Israel were in the battlefield. The question is, where was the battle won? In the field or on the mountain? Who was contributing, who contributed to the victory of the battle? Was it Moses, Aaron, and who on top of the mountain? Or Joshua with the army of Israel? Brothers and sisters, there was cooperation of the two teams. Those on top of the mountain, those at the bottom, at the foot of the mountain. And because of their cooperation, Amalek was defeated. Now let's go to Conflict and Courage, 95 paragraph 4. It says, Moses and Aaron and who were stationed on a hill overlooking the battle, with arms outstretched toward heaven and holding the rod of God in his sight. In, in his right hand, Moses prayed for the success of the armies of Israel. So Moses was praying for the success of the armies of Israel. As the battle progressed, it was observed that so long as his hands were reaching upward, Israel prevailed prevailed but when they were lowered the enemy was victorious so now who was fighting it was Je joshua and the armies of israel but who was praying for victory it was moses as long as his hands were up israel was being victorious as long as he became tired that he decided to lower down his hands, the enemies were prevailing. Brothers and sisters, it's actually very important to realize that Aaron and who helped Moses to keep his hands up until the going down of the sun and Amalek was defeated. Were it not for the help of Aaron and who, Moses would not have succeeded. Were it not for the intercession of Moses, Joshua would have not defeated Amalek. Brothers and sisters, this can never be emphasized better. Our victory in the preaching of the gospel, it's our working together. The year has been prosperous because of our working together. We thank God for the radio ministry. Were it not be for you who were supporting, it was impossible for us to be successful in this journey. We thank God for my colleagues I have been working with. Were it not for you who were praying, we have not received utterance from God. There was nothing to write home about, but because others pumped in money, 
others prayed, others gave ideas, others gave suggestions, others went with us. Today we can safely say that year has been of great success because of the cooperation which God gave to us, his children. Those who were far, they contributed. Those who were near, they contributed. Those who were far, they prayed. There was unity and cooperation. And it is because of this unity that victory does not belong to any of us. And also, glory does not belong to any of us except to the God that gave the increase. So he says, as Aaron and who supported the hands of Moses, they showed the people their duty to sustain him in his odious work while he, showed, he should receive the word from God to speak to them. And the act of Moses also was significant, showing that God held their destiny in his hands while they made him their trust. He would fight for them and subdue their enemies. But when they should let go the war, let go their hold upon him and trust in their own power, they should be even weaker than those who had not the knowledge of God and their foes would prevail against them. So it was God who was fighting the battle against the Amalekites through Moses, Aaron and who, who were interceding on the mountain while Joshua was facing the Amalekite, was fighting Amalekite at the bottom of the mountain. There was cooperation of these two teams while they were empowered by God to destroy Amalek. Brothers and sisters, in the work of the preaching of this gospel, in the work of sharing the message of God, we depend upon God. We trust in God. We work together. Everyone has a work to do. Everyone has something to do in this work. This work is a work that is done by cooperation. This work is done by a team. The question is, what is your responsibility in the team? Are you like Moses who will be the prophet? Or will you be like who or Aaron who hold the hands of Moses? Or will you be like Joshua who will actually be in front of the battle to fight? At the end of it all, the credit belongs to God. Who empowered Joshua? Who empowered Moses? Who empowered Aaron? Who empowered who? Brothers and sisters, as we go towards the end of the year, we think of the achievement. The credit belongs to God. It's not him that preached. It's not him that gave. It's not him that prayed. It's not him that organized. But it's God who empowered his team to do this great work and to finish the course. Therefore, let glory, praise, and thanks be given to the God of mess and compassion. It says, as the Hebrews triumphed, when Moses was reaching his hands towards heaven and interceding in their behalf, so Israel of God prevail when by faith take hold upon the strength of the, the mighty helper. Yet divine strength is to be combined with the human effort. Therefore, this gospel will not triumph by itself. God will put his divine help, but his divine help should be combined by human effort. Therefore, we cannot be successful in the preaching of the gospel without the cooperation of divinity. He says that Moses did not believe that God would overcome the force while Israel remained inactive. No, Moses did not believe that. Israel had to do something while the great leader was pleading with the Lord Joshua and his brave followers were putting forth their uttermost efforts to repulse the enemies of Israel 
end of God. What is the lesson which God is giving us here? We are not going to be successful in the gospel without the cooperation with one another and with God. God is helping us to know him. God is able to work out everything by himself. But God is teaching us the importance of teamwork. We need one another in the battle of the gospel. We need one another. As we work the work of God, God will direct his battle. God will direct his work. God will lead his work. But our cooperation with him, it's central for us to be successful. Now he says, as they advance, the way become more difficult. Their route lay through stony raven and barren west. All around them was the great wilderness, a land of deserts and of pits a land of drought and of the shadow of death, a land that no man passed through and where no man dwelt. That's Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 6. But however, in that land, that's Prophet said, Patrick and Prophet page 337, paragraph 2, God was leading through the rocky gorges, far and near were thronged with men, women and children, with beasts and wagons and long lines of flocks and heads, their progress was necessarily slow and toilsome, and the multitudes af after their long encampment were not prepared to endure the peril and discomfort of the way. But brothers and sisters, in that difficult, in that pain, in that challenging situation, God was still leading and God was leading the way. Now, in that ground, which is not straight, which is difficult to travel, yet for them, because of the presence of God, they managed to travel. It says the mighty angel who went before them was the son of God. He evened their path so that their feet did not swell. It was the might, the majesty of heaven who subdued and restrained the throng, the strong and dangerous beasts of the forest, as well as the poisonous serpents that infested the wilderness. The children of Israel did not realize the thousand dangers they were preserved from, from in their travels because they were kept from them. They did not realize the beast, the dangerous beast, the poisonous serpents. God preserved them. Even us today, brothers and sisters, we can talk of the goodness of God, how he preserved us from diseases, how he preserved us from sorrow, from pain, from many challenges that could have befallen us. Our God is faithful. It says, Israel had been preserved by a miracle of God's mercy during every day of their travels in the wilderness. The mighty angel who went before them was the Son of God. Yes, have you felt the leading of God? Have you pre realized the leading of God? And then inspiration say, in reviewing our past history, having traveled our our every step of advance to our present standing, I can say praise God. As I see what God has wrought, I am filled with astonishment and with confidence in Christ as leader. We have nothing to fear for the future except as we shall forget the way the Lord has led us and his teaching in our past history. That's a Christian experience. 204. We have nothing to fear for the future unless we have forgotten how God has led us, how he has provided, how he has sustained, how he has empowered. Indeed, let the Lord be praised. But now let's conclude this with this quotation uh, today with God, page 47, paragraph 2. The opposition which you meet may prove an advantage to you in many respects. It will develop a class of Christian virtues which seldom spring up in the path of prosperity and sunshine. Faith, patience, forbearance, heavenly 
mindedness, increasing trust in providence are the fruits which blossom and mature amid clouds of darkness, storm and tempest. So brothers and sisters, when we meet challenges, these challenges just help us, it empowers, it helps us to grow. But the last part says, the forest tree which stands alone and exposed to the fierce winds and storm and tempest will not be uprooted by the gale, but will strike its roots deep and spread out its branches in every direction, becoming more beautiful and strong as the consequences of its withstanding storm and tempest. Therefore, brothers and sisters, the challenges that we met in 2023 have strengthened us as we go into 2024 by God's grace if we live until that time. These challenges have been an instrument to empower us so that we can be what God wants us to be. Now he says, this may be your case. You may be deprived of sympathy and human support and you may feel that your only hope is to reach up your hands in supplication to God and hangs your helpless soul upon your Redeemer. Help which heaven sends will be just what you need. Oh yes, just what you need. So as the sun set in 2023, Let's remember this. The way how God led the Israelites is the same way he will lead you in the past, in the future. As he has led you in 2023, amid the tempest, amid the challenges, we have developed some experience. And now we can build on that experience to be victorious. We can build on that experience to be more faithful. We can build on that experience to depend upon him. As the singer say, we have come this far by faith. I want to be honest, brothers and sisters, it was through faith that I've lived this year. It was through faith that I see the power of God. And let your faith carry you through as we wait for the soon return of Jesus Christ. Let's work together, just like Aaron, who, Moses, and Joshua. Let's coordinate the work of God. After all, glory belongs to God who empowers us all. Nobody deserves credit except God. Therefore, in the work of God, he's counting on you. He's counting on me. He's trusting in you. Let's trust that he will do what he did even to Israel. When we come to Raphidim, where there is no water, he will provide. At Raphidim, where there is a war, he will give us victory. And through it all, we'll learn to trust and believe in him. May the Lord bless us. Shall we pray? Lord Jesus, it was a joy and privilege to see your power and your grace throughout the year calendar 2023. We have come towards the end of this year, shortly maybe to begin a new year if you allow us to live. Lord, we have seen your power. We have seen your grace. We have seen your provision. We have seen your goodness. We have seen your love. But Lord, you have preserved us for something mighty, something big. This is our sincere request. Give us power to obey the healthy laws. These are, give us power to overcome the appetites and passion. Give us power to be victorious over all the temptations which were too difficult for us in 2023. Above all, Lord, give us power to sincerely live for you. And Lord, give us grace to work together, to see great harvest as we give the message of the present truth, the message of this hour awaiting for your sin return. Bless us, we beseech you. Bless us, we call on you. Bless us, we plead with you. Lord, to you be the glory for great things we have done. In Jesus' name, amen.
May the Lord truly bless you, brothers and sisters. I look forward to see you in the next edition. Maybe in the next edition will be in the month of January by God's grace if God allows us to get there in everything. We have learned to trust God. We have learned to believe in God. Don't forget to share the message. Don't just forget to subscribe. I would love to see your comments and would love to see where you are following us from. Until then, continue to be strong in the Lord and may the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.